Hey friends, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor artist. I was in my garden yesterday and a feather fell from the sky out of nowhere. There was no bird in sight, and I was really inspired to paint one for you. But I knew I wanted to do my next video with the watercolor brush pens. So I'm gonna be painting a feather using the watercolor brush pens and regular watercolor. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to get started, I've got my Arches watercolor paper. I've got three different brushes, a size 12, a six, and then I've got a size zero liner brush. I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors and two cups of water, one for cool colors, one for warm colors. And then I'm also bringing in my Arteza watercolor brush pens, which I've used on several videos already and I love these. So I'm gonna be bringing these in also just to show you how to do a feather in these as well as the regular watercolors. All right, so if you want to Google any image of a feather you want, you can. We're going to be doing whimsical feathers today, so they're not going to be realistic. They're just going to be bright colors. And you can draw yours out if you want to with a light pencil. Uh, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and just kind of just start painting mine. So what you're going to want to do first, and I'm, like I said, I'm just picking up. I'm just going to be pretty much using what I've got on my palette here. Uh, I think I've got my Windsor um, blue green and my Windsor green blue. I'm going to mix them together because I really love aqua colors and I like uh, pinks and reds. So whatever color you choose, don't even worry about it. It's whatever you have on your palette. All right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this little arch here. Just very lightly. I'm using my size six right now. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to make kind of like a little white line. So see how I'm doing two lines next to each other and I'm using leaving the negative space in between. So it's just leaving like this little white line, negative space. And that's gonna be the middle of the feather. And then you can go ahead and start closing that in a little bit up towards the top. And I'm just making little strokes from the inside of the feather out And if your line here, if your negative space is a little too wide, go ahead and close it up a little bit. And I'm just feathering it off like this. So I'm just kind of pushing in the middle, and then as I get to the end of the feather here, I lift up. So push, lift up, push, lift up, push, lift up. So just you're making these beautiful feathery little marks like that. If you wanna go ahead and start changing up some of your colors, I'm just gonna pull in a little bit of purple that I had on my palette. And you can leave some negative space between the actual um, little feathers here. So it doesn't have to be closed all the way down. You can leave a lot of negative space if you want to. So I think I'll just leave a little negative space right there. You can close it in a little bit towards the end here, towards the middle if you want, and then just leave a little bit more negative space. I'm gonna start doing the other side too. You can do different colors if you want to on the other side. I think I'm just gonna stick with what I've got so it'll just be mimicking both sides of the feather here. So I'm pushing and I'm, pull, and, and I'm lifting, push and lift, push and lift. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my green again. And I'm working wet on dry. I did not wet my paper. You can definitely, actually I'm gonna show you another one um, where I wet my paper first. So this one you have a little bit more control because your paper is dry, so you have a little bit more control where your colors are laying down. If your, if your paper was wet, you wouldn't have as much control. So I'm gonna show you a couple different looks and then I'm also gonna show you the looks with the watercolor brush pens also. All right, let's bring in a little bit more of our purple color. A little bit more on my palette here. Let's leave a little negative space down here. Close up my white line a little bit here. I can bring my purple into some of my aqua color. And as you come to the end of your feather, 
you're just gonna kind of close it off just kind of like that. So you've got this like nice little crisp line here, like that. Also make sure the shape as you're going down, just make sure the shape of your feather kind of goes like a uh, thinner, obviously at the point, and then it widens, 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 and then it ends down this way. So just kind of curve it up a little bit. All feathers are different. It just depends on what you're looking at. All right, so as I let this one dry a little bit, I'm gonna go on to another, um, another feather. But I wanna close off this little, his, the little part here that attaches to the bird, make it a little bit thicker. Oop. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. So I'm bringing up that color a little bit because my feather is still very, very wet. Like that. And then we're going to bring in little wispies and things like that too towards the end. But I want this to dry because I think I'm going to give it another, um, another layer. All right, so we're going to put this one aside. We're going to grab another piece of paper. And I am going to use the Arteza brush pens first this time because um, I'm going to be using the Arteza brush, brush pens on the one that we just did. So that'll be kind of flip flop. So I'm going to be using these first just to kind of show you. So here again, you're going to pick up any color you want. I've got the light magenta if you've got these. And I'm just going to be doing that arc again. I'm not pushing too hard. I'm going to leave that little negative space. And again, a little too much, you can always close it up. And as you're starting to use your water on these, you can just definitely close it up even more. And then you can start making all those little marks, all the little feathers. And depending on how fast you're going, you're gonna see a little bit more negative space in there. If you do your line nice and slow, you won't see as much negative space in your little line there. Um, just depends on how fast you're going. So see, I'm not sure you can see it's a little grainy right there. It's because I was moving pretty fast. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a pink. I'm going to do the same thing with my pink one. And like I said before, you could have drawn out your feather first. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If you feel that you need to draw it out first, definitely do that. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just start wetting it as I work down. All right, so I'm taking a clean brush. I'm still using my size 6, and I'm going and I'm putting some water right over the marks I just made. And you're still going to see a little bit of your lines, depending on what paper you use. If I use my Canson watercolor paper, I don't see as many marks on it, but since the... Um, the Arches paper is very absorbable. Um, sometimes it leaves a little bit of the marks, the, the original line that you drew, it kind of leaves it on there. If you don't like that look, start changing the papers and just kind of play around with what papers you're using and you will probably get a completely different look. So I'm just gonna keep going down. So see how I still see, especially on the lighter colors, I still see that original line that I drew. If you don't like that, change the paper you're using and you may find that you like it on a different kind of paper. All right, let's go ahead and do a little bit more pink. And here again, you can leave a little bit of negative space if you want to. Make it as feathery as you want. There's so many different types of feathers out there and I'm not just talking about colors, like shapes and how they're little, um, I don't know what you would call these. I mean, I know the whole thing is a feather, but all these like little hairs or whatever you call it that are connecting to this little structure here. Um, you can make them a little tighter, you can make them a little looser, you can make them fluffier. So it just depends on what feather, what kind of feather you want. And I'm kind of going in like a little bit of a curve here. I'm going up and over, up and over, kind of like that. So I'm making this feather a little bit different. I want to mimic it on the other side though. So up and over, kind of like that, kind of like up, down, and, a, and up again. And I think maybe I'll make these a little bit 
a little bit fluffier, a little bit airier down here. All right, let's go ahead and get those nice and wet. And I'm just gonna kind of use the same motion I was doing. And we're gonna be layering this, so if you're not excited about the look that you're getting right now, don't worry about it, we're not leaving it like this. But if you do like the look, then you may not want to add too much, too much more. Just depends on what kind of look you're going for. I'm gonna close up my little line here a little bit. I had made it a little too thick, which is totally fine. I'm gonna pick up that same purpley color that I had done up there. And I know my paper is wet right now, so it's not showing up so much. So if that happens to you, what you could do is you can move to a different color or you can pick up your regular watercolors. And I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my opera pink. And I'm just going to kind of dab that in there every so often, just to give it a little dimension more towards the middle of the feather. And let that just kind of bleed out. So you can just work back and forth. That's what I do with my paintings. I just go back and forth between my regular watercolors and my watercolor brush pens. I love the look of both of them. You can achieve so many different looks with each one. So I just can't choose which one I like better. So I use both in majority of my paintings. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up a little bit of a more of a red color here. Bring in a little bit red. I want a little bit deeper in the middle of the feather here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, if you've never used a liner marker or a liner brush before, these are so awesome. Um, you can get really, really, um, thin, thin, long lines. So yes, if with a shorter um, bristle brush, you can get nice thin lines, but with the liner brush, you can extend that. It holds a lot of paint in here and a lot of water. So you can extend your line um, a lot longer than you can with just a regular small little thin brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up my opera pink and I'm gonna show you really quick. Let me get some water. Okay, so I've loaded my brush with some opera pink and I'm just gonna drag and lift, drag and lift. Look at that, is that really pretty or what? And you can get some really great detail, not just in feathers, in anything that you're painting. I'm gonna put a couple little wispies down here and turn my page so I can do the other side. Let it bleed off my page a little bit. how pretty that is. You can get these gorgeous little wispies right at the end. I mean, I'm just in love with this liner liner brush. Um, I've used liner brushes before, but um, for some reason, I'm just enjoying them a lot more lately. I don't know. As I get older, I think I'm just liking the look of this a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to go in with my smaller brush, and I'm just going to dab in a little bit of that opera pink every so often again. I just want that middle a little bit deeper. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I love bright, funky colors. Um, that's just kind of the artist that I am. I'm always attracted to bright colors. Uh, they make me happy, makes happy art. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry a little bit. And I'm gonna show you now the wet, um, the wet on wet technique. Okay, so this one here I had done, which we're going to do another um, layer on this in a minute, but this was the uh, dry on dry, or wet on dry, I should say. And then this was more with the Arteza brush pens. And then now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wet my page first and just show you the wet on wet look. So it's hard to see because I'm just laying down water right now, but I'm doing pretty much the same motion that I did before. Just with my little bristles going up, I made my little arc, my little line here. I'm gonna do one side of the feather at a time because I don't want it to dry out. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up, let's see. Oh, and I'm using my size 12 right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up that aqua color that I had made. 
and I'm just dropping it in where I just laid down my water and I'm letting that bleed together. And if it's not bleeding all the way up, you can help it a little bit. And then I made my little point up here. And the beauty of this technique is it just starts to bleed together. It just does the work for you. You have no control over it, obviously, um, of where it's gonna lay down. You can maneuver it a little bit like this if it's not pointy enough or feathery enough at the ends here for you. So you could just start maneuvering it a little bit up like that. But you really don't have much control where the water and the paint merge together. Um, but I do love this look because it just kind of does it for you. So it's got its pros and cons. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a little bit more of that color. Just wanted a little bit more saturated up here. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of that negative space here in the middle. And it's kind of hard to see where it is, where you're, where you're laying down your water. But if you look at it sideways, um, you can see the glistening from the light. So I'm just wetting it. Some of my paint is bleeding over, which is fine, totally fine. Get a little more of that mixture on my, page, on my palette there and I'm gonna start dropping it in. This side here's a little bit greener. I must have mixed a little bit greener. Totally fine. Help it along if it's not doing exactly what you wanted it to, help it along a little bit. You can start closing up that little middle line if you want to. And you could just even use the paints that are already on your paper and just kind of move it around. And then let's just close off our, our little feather. And I'll bring some little wispies down this way too. I did this with my 12, um, size 12 brush. You could do this with any size brush you want. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a little bit of my, let's drop in a little bit of that purpley color again, just like that. And I, like I said, I love bright colors. This is not bothering me. You can help it along. I, white, I dried off my brush a little bit and I'm just helping it along a little bit. I don't want to add any more water to this feather. There's definitely enough water on this feather. I don't need to add any more. I just want to play around with what's on my, my uh, page already. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. We're gonna go back to the first feather now. All right. We're gonna add a little bit more um, detail on him. So we did this with the regular watercolors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start uh, bringing in, let's see. I'm gonna start bringing in the Arteza brush pens. So this one is teal. And I'm gonna kind of stay with the colors that I had um, originally painted here. I'm just going in with these little strokes, the same strokes we've been doing all along. And if you left some nice negative space here and you love that, then don't, um, don't go over that. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my purple. Let's see if I have a different purple. Yeah, this one here. I'm trying to match up my brush pens to my watercolors as best as I can. I'm still doing the same kind of little movement. And this is just pretty on its own. It's just a very decorative feather. So you may even wanna just leave these nice crisp lines and, and not put water on it. It just, like I said before, it just depends on what look you're going for. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple up here too. but I am going to add um, the water to this just to show you. But look how beautiful that is on its own. I just, I love it. All right, I'm taking my size six, just water, and I'm gonna go over my green first because my green is a little bit of a, um, a lighter, it's, it's not as strong as my purple, not as dark as my purple, so I'm gonna do that first. I'm just taking my water, I'm going over my strokes, blending it out a little bit, 
You can even close up that little line here, that negative space that we had made at the beginning. You can even start closing that up a little bit if you want to. Look how pretty that is. So it's blending out on its own. Now I'm gonna go over my purple. And as your paper is wet, it's gonna to continue to bleed um, and blend together. If you want it to stop at any point, just take your heat gun or your blow dryer, whatever you choose to use, and just kind of dry it. If that's where it's, if that's the point you want it to stop at, dry it. Um, otherwise, it's going to continue to in, and keep blurring. See how this is really even mixing in even a little bit more right now? The paper's still wet and it's still moving around. Put a little bit down here. Look how pretty that is. And you can even bring them out even a little bit further. If you want to give your leaf, a, or leaf, I'm sorry. If you want to give your uh, feather a little bit more dimension, just bring those strokes out a little bit. And they'll be like lighter. See how that, that's a little bit lighter on the end here. It just kind of gives you a little bit more uh, dimension. I'll do the other side. I want to use my liner brush now and give some little wispies down here. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of my purple and I'm gonna give a little bit of wispies. I'm just using the original purple that we had done on this feather. A couple little wispies down here. Just love that look. There, look how pretty that is. And you could just continue on and on and on. You could add pinks in here. You can add a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of yellow on top of the greenish blue. It'll give you a little bit more of a limey color. But I'm going to stop right there because I want to go ahead and show you this one again. So it's pretty dry. It's still a little, little, little bit damp, but it's, it's pretty dry. All right, so this was the watercolor marker. Now I'm going to show you the opposite of the watercolor, regular watercolors on top of the marker. All right, so I'm gonna try and match up some of my colors again as best as I can. I'm using Opera Pink, and I'm just going over it this time with my number six brush, giving it a little bit more dimension. I'll do the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing here. You can use your liner brush for this part if you want to. I'm just using my size six. And I'm gonna bring even that more of a magenta color even down a little bit more because I just I really want to deepen up this middle just like that and then you can feather it out if you want to bring in a little bit of my purple I just like when things have contrast so I'm constantly adding more paint and more color to my paintings. I just like things to be vibrant and colorful and playful. All right, I'm gonna just use my, no, actually I'm gonna stick to my number six and I'm going to um, just deepen up that little part down here a little bit more. There we go. Bring it up a little bit. I can't wait to see what that looks like when it dries. I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dry um, this one because I think um, I want it to stop right there. Otherwise, it's just going to keep blending into each other. So you could just let it go if you want to, but I think I want it to stop at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and blow dry this really quick. Okay, so I went ahead and I dried this. So this is the one that we had done the page wet first. So it was the wet on wet technique. And see at these beautiful um, colors, all the mixture here. Um, I even love some of these blooms that are happening right here. I love it. So it doesn't bother me at all. All right, so we're going to continue on. And I'm going to start using my... No, I'm going to continue using my size 6. And I'm just going to keep layering this little feather here with pretty much the same colors that I already had used. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let that dry, and I'm going to go back to my pink one here, and I'm going to add more depth into this one. So I'm going to use my liner brush, and I'm going to pick up some purple, 
And I just want to deepen up some of these little areas here. And I just want to give it a little bit more wispy. I just love my liner brush. Look how much dimension we just put into that feather. And you can make as many of these little lines as you want. You can go crazy and just make a ton if you want to. Look how pretty that is. I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up my opera pink again. Just add a little bit more pink in there. Wow, look at that feather. That is really pretty. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry it and then I'm just gonna finish it off with a little bit of this eggplant color. And I'm just gonna go in just down the middle of the feather, giving it a little bit more of a push with some darker. And I'm not gonna add water to this. I just wanna keep the detail. Wow, is that pretty. This feather's got a lot of dimension to it. Okay, so this one's pretty much done, but you can keep playing with it all day if you want to. Okay, so this one was the regular watercolor with the watercolor brush pen over it. And then this one was the watercolor brush pen with the regular watercolor over it. But I did come in at the end and put in a little bit of details with the watercolor brush pens again. So those two are pretty much done. You can keep playing with them all day, but I'm gonna finish off this third one, which was the wet on wet technique. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my watercolor brush pens and I'm just going to come in and just give it a little bit more um, detail. See how that's just giving it a little bit more depth right away? This side of the feather has a lot more depth already. Do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm gonna come out and do a couple of those little wispies down here. Look at how much dimension that just gave it. Just a little bit of the watercolor brush pen. And you could have achieved that with regular watercolor too, especially with your liner brush. Um, I'm gonna come in and do a little bit more of the teal. Just add a little bit more of the teal. And you don't even need to put water on this if you don't want to. If you just like the, the technique of it and you don't want it to blur anymore and bleed into each other, then just leave it like this. If you do want to experiment and see what it looks like with a little bit of water added to this, you can definitely do that too. It'll just blur your colors and blend them in a little bit. You know what? I think I'm going to do just a little, little bit to the middle here, just to show you what I'm talking about. And a little bit of water. See how that's blurring and blending together already? I'm gonna do just the middle to give it a little bit more dimension. Look at that. And if you think this white line here in the middle is just too stark for you, go ahead and close it up a little bit. Wow, that's really pretty too. So we achieved three feathers with three different techniques. So that's what I wanted to show you, that you could pretty much achieve the same look with different techniques and different materials. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you'd like. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Have a great day. Bye.